I got a cool project this week that I thought would be a perfect opportunity to share with you guys and show you the tuning processes that we went through of tuning this large part in PEC while using dual nozzles on the 22 i decks with one of them as a dedicated support material. And that is gonna lead us into using the 3D X Tech HTS-1 or HTS-2 high temp breakaway support. I'll tell you a little bit about the story. We have a customer, has one of our 22 i decks and he's doing a print service. One of his customers reached out to him and gave him this project, said, hey, we need this to go into an engine bay. It needs to be able to withstand like oils, hot things dripping onto it and it needs to be able to stand some high temperatures of that engine bay. So he started doing this part himself, but ran into some challenges, especially when it came to the support and the interface layers of that. So he reached out to us, said, man, Patrick, if you'd help me tune this part, show me what you do, that would be awesome. I said, hey, send it over, we'll slice it up and we'll get to work. So he sent the part over. And what you'll see is underneath, it has a lot of support material. And then these holes, right here go up at an angle. And so the support material goes up in there to support that hole and to support the top of it. So pulling it out, trying to pull that out on the angle is very hard. That with all the other support material was making it very difficult. So I got the part, I said, let me throw it on the machine real fast. What I should have done is practice what I preach and that is to slice a section off and tune it first just to get an initial feel and see if that support material is going to... I did it. So I said, let me just throw this on the printer. It's a 16, 17 hour print. Come back in the morning, I'll at least get the first result and see how it went. And I'll tell you, approaching it on the build plate, the part looked good. I was like, oh, this is nice. Until I took it off and I tried to pull this support material off. This is all support right here. And there is absolutely nothing gonna get this off. I said, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. So then I went back to what I should have done in the first place, and that is to cut off a section of the part, focus in on the overhangs where I'm gonna need the support and also get up into that hole. So this is what I did. And I was able to get the support off with this one by doing, I think a 0.225 millimeter Z gap offset, but I just didn't like how rough it was. And you could tell this was really hard to get off. It wasn't gonna work for the entire print. And so I said, you know, this is a good opportunity to let's switch and go to dual nozzles. It's a great use case for the machine. That's why we like it. That's why we have it. Let's go ahead and utilize that second nozzle for dedicated support material. So I got some HTS, threw that into the dryer, got that dry. And then we did the first print, cut off a section. And this is probably one of the smoothest offsets I've ever felt. That bottom layer of the part is perfect. It came off relatively easy but it needed a lot of pressure to really get it and get it going. So if we were to do that for the whole part, I think it would be a little bit too hard. So I said, we have to tune this still, gave it some Z offset. The problem we ran into is with the slicer, if you're using the rectilinear support, it wouldn't give you a Z offset choice. It kept it at zero. And so that's why this one was at zero. The breakaway support came off decently, but there's no way that entire part is gonna be easy to remove. So we had to figure out a way to get that Z offset. And by switching to organic tree support, now we could control that Z offset. We added a little bit, printed another sample piece, and this came off pretty smooth. Oh. Dang. So I said, okay, this is looking good. Let's go ahead and run another print. So we ran another overnight print and came back. And although it came off well in some areas, there were still some other areas that it wasn't looking good. Either the support material uh, wasn't sticking well, the top layers. And so we had to change and started tuning the top interface layers. I believe we went to 10, which would give us a good amount of material to grip onto and pull off. If you only had like three layers, you try to pull it and it would start breaking apart. Went to a larger offset, printed that part, and that was way too much. Now we're not getting good results. Let's kind of go back. Let's figure it out. And so we went back to a small section. We tuned the density of the support material. We tuned the Z offset and we got it to where we felt it was really good. It was enough to come off easy, didn't have any sagging. So we went ahead and went for the full send it and printed one final one and came out great. That came off, the holes 
came out nice, and we'd finally come to the solution. Using dual nozzles, 3DX Tech HCS support, got the job done. Nazar, I'll actually let you pick it up. From here, we got this first part, support material wasn't coming off, we made the decision to go to the HTS. Can you start over and tell us the first, what happened and walk us through this process? As Patrick said, it was a newer material for us. So we just went ahead and tried the standard settings and we selected support material, assigned to the second nozzle and set zero offset, uh, which is standard used for soluble or breakaway materials. As you can see, the surface looked really good, but there are some places where it wasn't sticking. And also it was very hard to remove at zero offset. So we wanted to give it another try and the same saying is here, try there, but increase the Z gap. So as you can see, it didn't stick at all. So we understand that we need to change the Z gap. And this is the first test we did. This is just 80 microns, uh, 0.08 millimeters. The surface looks really good, but it was a little bit hard to remove. So we wanted to go a little bit further and try 0.1. It was pretty easy to remove, but we still went a little bit further for the final part, knowing that there is a lot of surface air and it will be even harder to get out of this cavity. So we went with 0.14 millimeter layer gap. I think we could do a little bit less, but it gave us really good result. Support was easy to remove and we did some other tricks to make it work even better. One most important setting we adjusted was Z offset. We adjusted Z offset between part and support here, then fine tune here and got it perfect in the final part. That was the most important step. But as you can see, this is a big support and having one piece and then try to remove it would be really hard. So what we did, we added those breaking lines. So we just blocked the support here and paint it over here and here and the same here. And that's how you can break it. Breaks like a cracker. So you can easily break it along those lines and then it's so easy to remove. Also, as you can see, it doesn't look like a standard support. We have flat top layer where usually supports don't have it necessarily. So what we did, we have zero or very small like 0 0.2 millimeter uh, line, uh, distance between the lines uh, on top and we have a lot of layers. We have at least 10 layers, we can go even further. And we learned this uh, when doing one important project with high temperature nylon. What we want to achieve, we want to have a strong part. Then instead of having weak support, we want to have a strong support. We want to have enough separation layer. Then we keep the part and we remove a strong support. Support, as you can see, that's how it was removed. It removes this one piece and there is pretty much no disadvantage to this method. Having few top layers, if you only have like two or three, when you try to pull off the support material, it'll pull off chunks of the support, but it'll leave that top layer still connected to your part. So by going with like minimum 10 layers, it gives you enough meat to really grip onto, and when you pull it, it just pulls off the entire piece. So that's one trick. We also increase the density of the tree support. By having it a lot more tighter and closer, it lays down those layers on top of it, that 10 layers that I'm talking about, lays it down, and again, has something to grip to. If it was way less dense, and the trees were all separated and spaced out, you would pull it, and then that tree would just break off. So that also helped. One thing I will mention is all of these parts could not have been done without the nanopolar adhesive. No, seriously guys, this is why we invented this stuff. It was dealing with these materials and getting those first layers to stick. If you don't get that first layer good, it's just going to give you headaches throughout the rest of the print. And so using the Nano is pretty awesome because one, I don't have to use brims, which is nice. It leaves the part nice and smooth. I used to hate taking those brims and you have little jagged edges and stuff. So it makes it nice. But as you take this off and you let the build plate cool down, you'll just hear this start releasing cracking. Definitely, if you guys haven't checked it out, check out the nanopolymer adhesive. Works with all materials, all build plates, all surfaces and stuff, and it's actually great. We had an absolute blast doing this project, getting this part ready so he can get into his customer's hands and being able to dial in the HTS material from 3DX Tech 
sets it up for a new profile to make all of you guys' lives easier. Again, this was all done on the 22 IDEX. This is a perfect use case for having a machine like this with dual independent extruders so that you can tune parts like this. Doing this in the normal, I don't think it would have even been possible. You might have been able to do it, but the bottom layer would have been just so, so nasty. Your part strength on that layers would have been good. And that's why we created 22 IDEX, not only to print mirror and duplicate yeah. mode, which gives you 2x throughput, but to print some parts that are literally impossible with standard single nozzle machines. So if you have any questions, you have some sample cases, or you want to know more about the 22 IDEX, reach out to us. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Nazar, thanks for your help. Really, the tuning, everything was fantastic. We got this done at an incredibly fast rate. I think the customer is stoked and excited, and that's what we like to do. So guys, leave some comments below if you want to see some more stuff. Reach out to us to send some parts. Check out the 22 IDEX, and if you haven't done the nanopolymer adhesive, promise you it's going to save you some gray hairs. Have a positive day, and we'll see you on the next video.